Uh, welcome. Here we uh, have the last kind of three categories, neuro, cardio, and endocrine. And there's not a ton over the counter uh, for them, but I think the principles are sound and uh, it gives us a, an opening into the med brand name medications, uh, which are in the book. So start with benzocaine. Uh, we look at and brand name Ambisol. Uh, we start with the cane stem. And if you think of cocaine, uh, which was one of the uh, initial uh, local anesthetics uh, until we found out that it had those addictive properties and came up with benzocaine, lidocaine, some other choices. Uh, so it is an anesthetic. Uh, and I want to go over there between something that's an anesthetic and something that's an analgesic. So an analgesic can help with pain, uh, but an anesthetic uh, is going to uh, normally numb something uh, but also put somebody to sleep obviously this is a topical anesthetic so that's not going to happen uh, but uh, it works differently it works by blocking axonal conduction uh, this is one of the only uh, drug classes that does this uh, all most of the others work by some kind of transmitter uh, neurotransmitter uh, and you know I get into that in the book but uh, so uh, anesthetic uh, it's a dermatologic uh, form, uh, benzocaine, uh, you don't want to inject it uh, because it can cause some allergenicity. Uh, so there's a choice of lidocaine, uh, which is a better uh, choice as an injectable. Uh, but dermatologically, it's fine. Uh, and then uh, recognize the stem is cane. Uh, somebody mentioned that uh, if you take the U and the M out of the word numb, uh, you get the N and B in Ambisol, uh, so that might also be a good way uh, to remember what Ambisol is for or uh, Benzocaine. Um, the lidocaine I have here, again, it's that cane stem, uh, and the brand name for this particular product is Solar Cane. You know, after going out in the sun and maybe burning a little bit, uh, Solar Cane uh, can be used to. Uh, help numb uh, all of the pain from that burning and if you look at the the back of this bottle it says an ex it's an external analgesic maybe we can use those words uh, interchangeably if we're talking about something topical uh, but we understand that we're just trying to relieve pain and that's kind of the bottom line uh, lidocaine, though, if you start talking about an injectable, you start talking about something that can uh, treat dysrhythmias, or uh, which are uh, rhythms of the heart that are uh, not quite right. Um, you can uh, use it. There's a it's kind of a jelly form uh, that you can put into a compound to help uh, numb the throat if there's some uh, issues there. Uh, there's a patch that you can use. Uh, so lidocaine is very versatile. And uh, what I want to get across is that uh, these over-the-counter ones are over-the-counter and are safe over-the-counter because they're topical. But if you're talking about using something systemic, some kind of injection, uh, then lidocaine uh, would be by prescription and, um, you know, maybe paramedic would use them, uh, physician, something like that. Uh, and again, back to the stem, uh, the cane, that's what connects benzocaine and lidocaine is uh, in the similar class. And uh, the original cocaine is how uh, many students remember it because uh, that's something they're familiar with, uh, movies and things like that. Uh, meclizine is Dramamine. Uh, this is where that ene stem really gets you in trouble. Uh, so an amine is just something with a nitrogen atom in it, and I won't get into the organic chemistry of it. But ene in meclizine and then ene in a brand name. Well, brand names don't have stems. Um, and uh, the World Health Organization absolutely indicates that you know any kind of a uh, brand name, well, I think I saw it in World Health Organization, maybe it was uh, the British National Formulary. Um, one of those two basically said, don't do that. Okay, you're, you're gonna cause trouble if you uh, use a stem. So. Uh, examples of where somebody might have used a stem in a brand name is like monopril or fascinopril. Uh, that pril ending means that it's a angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, uh, and that's uh, not not really something you want to do. Uh, but meclizine, 
this is actually an antihistamine, uh, but we found it. Uh, it helps with motion sickness, so somebody going on a cruise or something like that uh, can help. Uh, you see the word antiemetic, uh, so em emesis is nausea and vomiting or vomiting. Uh, so antiemetic means against uh, that vomiting. Uh, I mentioned again the ene and the brand and amine. Uh, don't use ene uh, as a mnemonic. Uh, and then dizzy and izzy. Uh, somebody told me that the I-Z-I, uh, they just put a because if you if you like squish the C and the L together, it looks like a D, and then you have a Z and then an I, so you can remember that it's for dizziness. Um, that might help you uh, remember what meclizine is for. Um, in the book, I use this anti-insomnic as a segue to the sedative hypnotics. So a lot of times pain keeps people up, and acetaminophen uh, helps with that pain as a non-narcotic analgesic. And then diphenhydramine, well, it was an adverse effect that people got sleepy, but you have a safe medication, a uh, relatively safe medication that uh, just happens to make people drowsy, so why not put it with a pain reliever and see if it helps people sleep? Uh, and that's what uh, Tylenol PM is. So the non-narcotic analgesic acetaminophen, diphenhydramine is the H1 antihistamine, the first generation, uh, and then pain plus insomnia. Uh, what's the PM stand for? If you really care, uh, it means post meridium. So, well, actually, it's probably pronounced meridium, uh, but the meri uh, means mid, and then diem means day. So, after midday, uh, but we really use PM for evening. I'm really talking about that. But that's just like uh, anti meridium uh, would be the AM. So, anti means before, uh, just like before you play poker, they throw out the anti that comes out before any of the cards come out, or your antibrachium is your forearm, what's in front of the arm. Uh, so, uh, but if you, um, sometimes those initials are a little bit uh, confusing, uh, but we've gone through quite a few of them. Uh, so the D for decongestant, the DM for dextromethorphan, uh, which is an antitussive or stops cough, um, with PM certainly for uh, sleep and drowsiness. Um, and the other one I can't think of right now. Okay, uh, so those are the four that I would classify under neuro if you're talking about over-the-counter. Uh, most neuro drugs are by prescription, uh, but um, these have uh, some effect that uh, can help us understand better uh, the nervous system medications a little bit. Um, the cardio drugs, uh, really I've just got a couple that help with cholesterol, uh, and then I'll talk about aspirin, uh, not as an analgesic, uh, but an antiplatelet. Uh, so omega-3 fatty acids, these are an essential fat. What an essential fat means is that uh, you have to get it from your diet. It's essential, uh, well, I didn't mean to use that word, but it's part of the cell, it's important for cell membranes, uh, the formation of those. Uh, and then uh, lowering cholesterol uh, can help uh, reduce heart disease. Uh, so that's why this is so uh, popular. But uh, you'll find omega-3 in small letters, and you'll really find fish oil uh, as you know the big letters uh, for um, omega-3 fatty acids. I mentioned earlier the omega-3 ethyl esters in the very beginning, and uh, that's something that is in Lavaza, uh, which is a prescription uh, form of these omega-3s. Uh, it's gone undergone rigorous FDA testing uh, and it can be prescribed by a physician. Okay. Uh, niacin or nicotinic acid, uh, this is really just vitamin B3. Uh, it's supposed to improve cholesterol, increase HDL, uh, decrease uh, triglycerides, uh, but there's something called the niacin flush and that is, uh, some people get very flushed with it. Uh, you can take an aspirin uh, 30 minutes before you take niacin, and uh, doing that uh, will help uh, deal with this uh, flush. But niacin is a very good drug. I mean, it's a vitamin uh, over the counter and uh, relatively inexpensive, uh, as is the aspirin. Uh, so when you're comparing, especially if you don't have insurance, you know, some of the options that you have for cholesterol lowering. Uh, this might be a good option uh, if money is a real issue. Uh, aspirin, I mentioned before, is an analgesic at 325 milligrams. 
Uh, here we have Ecotrin low dose. So again, uh, the brand name Ecotrin uh, is talking about enteric coated uh, and then aspirin. And low dose means that it's 81 milligrams. I think I've seen it abroad at 75 milligrams, but you get the idea. Uh, we're at a fraction of that uh, analgesic dose, uh, maybe a quarter, something like that. Uh, and uh, so it is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, but that's not what we're using it for here. Now, what we're using it for here is it has an effect on platelets. And you'll hear the term sticky. So if you have some kind of atherosclerotic plaque, that is some buildup of this plaque in a coronary artery, and if you think of your fist as, or your heart as a little bit larger than the fist, and then the little tiny arteries that are on there, uh, it doesn't take much to create a blockage. Uh, so the idea is to keep those platelets from sticking together, keep them from uh, clotting, uh, and in that you know, very high uh, speed um, you know, arteriolar artery. Uh, 365 tablets, uh, that's an easy way to remember that you know, it's something that you take every day. Uh, and uh, really, uh, patients that have had prior uh, stroke, uh, heart attack, things like that. Uh, the morbidity mortality is uh, much improved uh, with uh, aspirin. Okay, so those are uh, just some drugs that have to do with cardio, introduces some basic concepts, uh, but uh, just not a lot for cardio over the counter. Uh, I'll finish these slides with three endocrine slides, so two insulins, uh, and then um, we'll talk about plan B. Uh, so regular insulin, or Humulin R, uh, Humulin R is the Eli Lilly and Company product. Um, it's regular insulin, and this is the one thing about over-the-counter medications. When somebody goes to look for an over-the-counter medication, they're usually looking for one thing. Uh, but that's why I tried to put this whole video series together so that you get a bigger picture of everything, and then you kind of understand where it fits in. You know, whether it is a GI, musculoskeletal, respiratory, or in this case, endocrine. To understand where regular insulin fits in, you really want to know Humalog, which is the shortest acting. Uh, you really have to take it with food. It happens so quickly. Uh, then Humalin R is regular, so it's kind of in the middle or on the left side. Uh, N uh, lasts a bit longer, uh, but not quite all day. Uh, and then Lantus, you know, we're talking about uh, all day long. So... Uh, to understand where regular insulin fits in, you have to know that Humalog is the shortest acting, R comes after that, N comes after that, Lantus comes after that, uh, to really get perspective. I say it's over-the-counter, it just means you don't need a prescription for it, uh, but it's probably going to be kept in a refrigerator uh, back in uh, the pharmacy, and um, here you see a vial that uh, you know comes from a hospital pharmacy. but. Uh, generally, it's going to be in a, in a white box, uh, sealed, uh, so that you know uh, no one has tampered with it. Uh, NPH insulin uh, is just a bit longer acting than humulin R. Uh, and uh, again, to understand where it fits in, you want to know Humalog, the prescription insulin, and it's prescription because it's so dangerous. If you really need somebody to give you the instructions, make sure that you know that you have to take it with food or very near food. Um, the R um, is usually given if you're going to move uh, the dosages up and down. Uh, that's the one you would adjust. Uh, the N, uh, this is going to last a little bit longer. You wouldn't really mess with that too much uh, throughout the day. Uh, and then Lantus, uh, again, that longer acting one. Uh, OTC, again, I mentioned that if you're talking about insulin, you're going to have to actually go to the pharmacy counter, ask them for it, uh, and then I recommend um, asking for the needles at the same time you get insulin uh, so that you don't have that kind of awkwardness where you go in and say, you know, I'd like to buy a bottle, you know, a hundred box of, you know, needles um, when you're a diabetic and, you know, there's nothing going on there. Uh, last one, uh, levonorgestrel. It's plan B one step. Uh, why do they call it one step? Well, it used to be two step. It used to be two pills, and now there's only one. And plan B, well, what's plan A? Uh, well, plan A was to use some kind of contraception uh, that, uh, something like condom or something like that, where you would 
uh, plan ahead that you know, you're, you're not trying to have uh, uh, this pregnancy happen. Uh, but plan B, uh, it's just a way of saying, okay, well, plan A didn't work, uh, so let's go to plan B. Uh, and what's plan B uh, coming uh, afterwards as an emergency contraceptive uh, to reduce the chance of pregnancy after having uh, unprotected sex. Uh, the stem is just, that means it's a progestin, uh, so we contrast that to an estrogen, uh, which would be E-S-T-R. Uh, and uh, progestins alone uh, you'll see, uh, but estrogens alone uh, for contraceptions is something that you won't see. So again, I hope this uh, series was helpful. Um, as always, if you want to contact me, I'm uh, always happy to talk to anybody that uh, um, has questions about the videos and so forth. Uh, and uh, you can contact me at aagara at dmac.edu.